Hey guys, how's it going? So I've been getting a few requests to put out some entry-level video editing tutorials. So now's the time, and without further ado, today is video number one of a series of Final Cut Pro tutorials. So if you're a beginner to the software or you've decided to make the upgrade from iMovie, then today's a great day. If, however, you don't yet have the software, then pause the video, go to the link in the description, download the free trial, and then resume the video. And if you're here and you already know the basics of Final Cut, then this video can still help you because it can improve and show you the proper way to organize your files and improve your workflow. So I did a little research on YouTube to see what beginner Final Cut Pro tutorials are already out there. And while there are some decent ones, they are quite old and Final Cut has definitely updated since then. So here we are, learning the easy way to make a video. We're keeping it plain and simple today. Let's do it. All right, let's begin with the organization of our hard drives. So here I have a folder called Travels 2019. And within each, there's the countries. And within each country, there are the different cameras that I shot on. So there's my Lumix. I have different photo and video organized like so. Under the finals folder, that's where I put my final photo edits. And here's some examples of some of the final photos that I have edited here. So under this miscellaneous folder, I like to put random things that don't really fit into the other folders like screenshots and photos that I like to add on top of the video. Alright, before we get into the editor, if you want to edit alongside with me the same clips, then click the link in the description, download the clips that I use to edit this video, and we can work along together. Alright, this is the layout we will see when we open Final Cut for the first time. So let's click on Open Library, and we're going to create a new one, and place it in the folder we're working in. So I'm going to place it in the Final Cut Pro 10 folder. And that's where I'm going to label my new library as Tutorial 1. Okay, from there we have events. I'm going to rename the first event that's defaulted to a date. And I'm going to name a bunch of different events to the different cameras that I'm using. That's how I like to keep organized and so I know where all of my different shots are. Also, I like to have a miscellaneous folder. That's where I put in all of those random items. All right, let's import some media into a folder. So firstly, you're gonna to want to select the Create Optimized Media. I currently have Proxy Media selected because I've been working on some bigger projects. However, this is just a small project. Let's keep it under Optimized Media. So under the hard drive, you can find the various clips and various footage that you want to bring into your project. Now, this is actually not the way that I prefer to do it. This can kind of take a long time. So I just close that. Go to the actual folder where I have set up and drag and drop the files that I want to use in this clip. So I just select all of the clips that I want and drag and drop them into the folders. Alright, so I'm just going through my Lumix camera clips and selecting the ones I want to use for this quick Instagram story that I'm going to make. I'm also going to do the same thing for my drone video clips. I can sample a few of them by clicking spacebar to see if I like them and then I can drag those over. So a quick way to scrub through the footage is click space, see if you like it, and drag it over. Okay, next I'm going to grab a song from my Epidemic Sound playlist that I have created. If you want to access my exact playlist, then just click the link in the description and you'll have access to it. Alright, next up we're going to select new project, name it, and then select the aspect ratio we want. So typically 1080p HD is good or 4K, but today we're doing an Instagram story. So we're going to select custom and reverse those numbers, 1080 by 1920 and that will make an Instagram story. If you want to make an Instagram feed post, change it to 1080 by 1350, but we want an Instagram story, so we'll keep it at 1920. Keep the frame rate at 23.98 or 24, that's not important for now, more on that later. Okay, so now it's time to start scrubbing through some clips and dropping pieces into the timeline. So we'll just find the section of the clip we like, grab it, drag it in. Drone shots are always an excellent way to establish a scene, so I'll start with a drone shot. Then let's move into the DSLR shots. So there are a few key tools we'll be using throughout this whole edit. The first one is Command R. That changes the speed of our clip. And the next one is the most popular tool you'll ever use, and that's Command B. It's the blade tool. And that will chop and cut your clips up, and you can just then delete and remove the clips that you don't want. So you'll see here, I'm just selecting the pieces of the clip that I like the most, bringing them into the timeline. And since these clips are already shot in slow motion, I'm speeding them back up to look a little bit more regular speed. Okay, so I'm just continuing to repeat that process of finding a clip, dragging it in, changing the speed, cutting it with the Command B blade tool until I have at least 15 seconds of footage there for my 15 second Instagram story video. 
All right, next up is select the song, bring it to the beginning, and now I'm going to cut the song at 15 seconds because that's the max duration we can have. All right, and you'll notice that my clips are 25 seconds. I need to cut those down. So now I'm just going to go into more trimming and make those fit with the song, fit with the beat. And so the song doesn't end abruptly, I'm going to fade that out with that tool right there, dragging it in. And same thing, after I bring this to match, I'm going to go to the beginning of the song and then fade that in as well. Next up, I want to fade out the final video to black. So if I select the transitions tool, Go down to dissolve and fade to color, hit that on the end and that will fade the clips out to black. Alright, so you'll notice our clips are still in the widescreen format. We want to transform them with that tool right there and be able to bring them to be viewed vertically on a phone. So I'm just going to fast forward through these next pieces as I adjust and select the areas of the clip that I want to show with the transform tool. Alright, once we've adjusted all of our clips to fit the screen, we want to start with a basic color grade. And our goal here is to make all of the clips from the different cameras match up. So by adjusting the saturation, the exposure, and the color, or the white balance, we can make each of these clips look similar. So I'm going to go through each of these clips, adjusting the shadows, the highlights, so basically the darks and the lights, making sure they match up as best as possible. So you'll notice I only am really adjusting a couple of things. The exposure of the shadows and the master and you'll see here with this drone shot I want to saturate the highlights because that's where the colors are from the sunset. Alright let's add some text so under the titles we can go to the custom title and drag it over top of the clip that we want to put a title on. So I'm going to change that to exploring Jordan and then I'm going to adjust my font. I like the font something wild sort of the font I always use and then just drag it into the spot that we want. All right, I'm gonna copy and paste, so Command-C, Command-V, and reuse that same font and text for the end of the clip. I'm going to drag a fade to color transition on top of that clip, and then just move it around to the spot that I want. I'm also gonna make it fit with the music and fit with my edit. So I'm just gonna type in the words that I want and drag the clip around as I see fit. Okay, the fade out is too quick for me, so I'm going to slow that down by extending that transition out a little bit so it's a longer, slower fade. Alright, now we're going to just wait for our video to auto-render. We can take a look at the process right there. Fast forward, it's done. Time to export. So at the top of the screen, we'll select File, Share, Master File. And then under those options, you want to click the Settings and have it under H264. That's a nice small file. It won't compress too much, it won't lose quality, but keeps the file small. Hit next and then save it wherever you want. Desktop's fine for me. So if this tutorial was moving too quick at any point, then just pause it and go back to those segments you need to replay. I just really have a problem with tutorials that get drawn out way too long. Okay, here's our final edit. Alright, I wanted to keep this one super basic because the most important thing is that you finish your project. Final Cut Pro can be a very powerful and advanced level software. However, its basic functions are intuitive, quick and easy. Get your edit done today just like I did and throw it up on your IG stories. Nothing fancy, no pressure, just done. Ah, now that feels good. Starting something and then completing it. Okay, that's it today. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more Final Cut tutorials. There's definitely more on the way.